Dennis Rodman, it's so great to see you. Thanks so much for giving myself and DeJur insight to your trip to North Korea. Last time we sat down, you went to North Korea back in 2013. You talk about Kim Jong-un as this hated dictator. What is it that brings you closer to someone like this? Where does that stem from? I went to North Korea the first time. I didn't expect anything but just to go have fun and to do what I do always, you know, entertain and play basketball and just party or whatever. But that trip was a whole different trip, whole different level in my life. People made it such a big deal about me just going over there. And I was wondering, I said, wait a minute, what is the big deal about this guy? And once we got in Beijing, they were saying like, do you know who this guy is? I said, no, I do not. He said, this guy is like probably one of the most hated guy on the planet. I'm like, so what, did, what does he do? <laughs> they just kept trying to fill me in with all the little details of what this guy do. So we get over there and we was meeting with open arms. Like I'm the president. <laughs> you, know, you know, got like 15, 20 people right there on their tarmac. And um, I realized it was something way bigger than that. It's almost like you were put into this situation. You went to North Korea to entertain through this basketball tournament. And then before you knew it, you were put in a situation that you never ever expected you'd be in today. It was, it was, it was weird, the fact that <clears throat> when I first went there, it was with the Harlem Grove Charters. I played half the game, so I got dressed. I was gonna sit down right there on, on the court, right there, and all, all the leaders were saying, uh-uh-uh-uh. So I walked across the court, go upstairs into the stands where he sits at all the time. And as he came out, I was wondering why all these people are standing up. You know, I've never seen that like that. They just sit there for like 15 minutes clapping. And he's trying to do this. They just kept clapping the whole time. He sits down. He orders like all these you know, Coca-Cola, these bottles here, little bottles. So I got Diet Coke. I sit there and all of a sudden he starts talking to me. But he knows no English. None. So he started talking to me, and the interpreters had three right there behind us. He said, I love basketball. I said, great. But he said, I would love to go to America, to New, to New York, at the Madison Square Garden. That's what, how he put it, to the, to the Madison Square Garden to watch a game. That's his dream, to come to, to come to New York, to watch a game. And I said, okay, we can do that. He said, it's not that easy. And so I said, all right, great. So maybe one day you can come to America with me, one day. He said, that'll be great. All I'm trying to do is trying to, try to open the door so we can have some type of communication. Do you look at this situation to have a humanistic side to it? It's like you think these people had a spell on them because all they talk about is him. I mean, it's, it's insane. You know, I just, I'm so intrigued how they, how they live their lives through, through this, this guy. And he's only like 33, 34 years old. Mm. And he's, he's changing North Korea so much where it's re really actually becoming a 21st century country now. It's more like they took down the Flintstone age yeah. and put in the Jetsons. Okay, so it's like, okay, out with the old and with the new. You guys are both famous for having really cool hairstyles, right? You, both of you and Ken. Did you talk about your hair? You, know? <laughs> you do have pretty good hairstyles. I, I don't know about Ken. He, he changes his hair all the time, right? But not, he don't change it. But he got one style. He do this way. He'll go this way. He does this way. You know. So he you know, he got some he got some fashion sense, right? You know. Even though he wore the same suits all the time, right? <laughs> it was a black one. It was a brown one. It was a green one, right? That's all he wears all the time, right? That's pretty much it. What's the next move? My next move is just to, just to get the all career and do sports. Yes, the door is open for Americans to come over there with sports teams to, have, to play sports. That's my mission right there. The sports minister told me it starts with one brick to build a bridge. It's sort of one, one stone, one nail to start anything in the world. It's not going to happen overnight. That's what they told me. Yeah. But guess what, though? We're going in the right direction. We want to continue to go that right direction. As long as we're friends, as long as we have something that we know we can depend on and trust, and that is why I mean, you are the gateway.